Georgia, would I lie to you? The show where fibs and fancies are the order of the day. And on Lee Mack's team tonight, the Spring Watch TV presenter who, when she was younger, worked on a crocodile farm. It's where she first got her love of animals and shoes and handbags. <laughs> Kate Humble! In the hit sitcom Rev, he plays the lovable, slightly odd, bookish nerd Nigel. And he's such a consummate actor, he started getting into character 32 years ago. <laughs> it's Miles Jump! <laughs> On David Mitchell's team tonight, an actor who stars in The Indian Doctor, a show all about the first ever Indian doctor in Wales. I'm not sure what part he plays, I just hope his Welsh accent's up to it. Sanjeev Bhaskar! <laughs> and it really is, it really is no exaggeration to say we have had hundreds of letters saying you've got to get this guy on the show. All from Judy, who just wants one <laughs> night to herself, Richard Laidley! And so we begin with uh, round one, it's Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And, Richard, you are first up. One Christmas morning, I woke up stark naked in our shoe cupboard, clutching nothing but two cans of fake snow. <laughs> Lee Mack, what do you make of that? So, what, yeah, what year was this? About 1993. OK, and can you talk us through how this happened? I uh, went to bed very drunk on Christmas Eve. Actually, it was Christmas morning by then, about two in the morning. And I woke up again uh, in the cupboard under the stairs, <laughs> totally naked, uh, with two, as I realised when I picked them up, empty artificial snow spray cans in each hand. And the light was on, and my face was in the Wellington boots. <laughs> what had you gone in there for? I'd gone in to put the snow cans back after what I then realised I'd done with them. What had what you, you done, done with them? them? <laughs> Two weeks earlier, we'd bought our family Christmas tree in the hall, and Judy and Chloe, my daughter, decided that it wouldn't be a good idea to put artificial snow on it, and Jack, my son, and I thought it would. And we had a massive row, and, of course, the ladies won. So the spray was hidden at the back of the cupboard, but I saw where Judy hid it. Okay. But you... Did this naked? Yes. <laughs> I did it in my sleep. Can I just stop you there? No yes. one's listening now. We're all just thinking. <laughs> oh, Richard Madeley sleeps naked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and clearly, I mean, I can only suppose what happened. I'd gone downstairs in my sleep, taken the cans out, covered the tree with uh, with fake foam, put gone back in the thing, and then woken up. You'd done the whole tree. The whole Was it a good job? It was terrible. I mean, it covered everything. It covered the lights, it covered the baubles, it covered... <laughs> it, was, it was like a great big Mr Whippy. <laughs> I'm intrigued by this uh, cupboard under the stairs, Richard. Oh, I think someone with your income would, by now, or by 1993 even, mm -hmm. during your, let's call it, heyday, would have had... <laughs> I do think you would have had it converted into a, into a, a downstairs uh, facility. Is that no. your view of opulence? <laughs> <laughs> that, that any sort of space under stairs must be fitted for immediate... Any sort of ingestion. unused space anywhere. <laughs> any money at all. There's, just, there's something about the combination of wealth, career success and a little cubbyhole that just says poo. <laughs> What did Judy and Chloe have to say about this in the morning? Christmas morning dawned and I went down with Judy and there it was, it's looking awful. And I just went... Jack, <laughs> we told you not to do that. Huh. And you went and kept it up for about a minute and then confessed. So you, you woke up at 2 in the morning? I didn't wake up. I was sleep spraying. You were sleep like. spraying, but yeah. then you went, in, you went into... That's a horrid comment. Please. <laughs> Think of the children. <laughs> you went to, We've you, all done you it. You did the spray. <laughs> What's your first conscious memory? Waking up in the cupboard or waking up in the bed? No, waking up in the cupboard. Do you always sleep naked? Yes. Always. Yeah. How does Judy feel about, about that? <laughs> well, so does she. Blimey. <laughs> is it me or is it getting up to the... Sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on, oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. Come, come, no, 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 give me a minute. <laughs> Hands up, who sleeps naked? David, keep your hands down. <laughs> That's got to be 40%. No, I mean, obviously, I go to bed dressed as Scrooge. <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? 
I definitely think it's plausible. What do you think, Kate? I, what concerns me is the gap between the waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and going to bed and not sort of doing anything about the tree... Just leaving it. Just leaving it. Miles? I think it is true. You do. So what are you going to say? <clears throat> OK, split decision. We will go with... I will go with Miles and say that's true. You're saying it's true? Richard Maidley, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? <laughs> I have to tell you guys, you've made a terrible start. For us, yeah. it's true. <laughs> uh, well done. Yes. Yes, it's true. One Christmas morning, Richard did wake up stark naked in his shoe cupboard, clutching nothing but two cans of fake snow. <laughs> Judy was quite pleased when she came across Richard sitting there stark naked as it reminded her to put the turkey in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> You're next. Every time I shower, I must adhere to my strict system for drying myself. OK, quick as you can, what's the system for drying yourself? Well, I, I, uh, I always use a towel. <laughs> you uh, weird eccentric. <laughs> well, actually, I, I don't start with a towel. I, use, I, I, I sort of brush water off this arm. I can do that 20 times. With, with your hand? <laughs> with my hand. Yeah. And then 20 times... That one. Do you dry yourself between your legs with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I, 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 I don't, Richard. Uh, is it like an OCD thing where it, where it is 20, or is it roughly 20? Oh, it can be multiples of 20. <laughs> You're not serious. Yeah, so, like, 20 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... We know what 20 is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the same with that. And then 30 in the hair. 30 in the hair. And then I go... Start, and then I think if I'm ready to move on to the towel phase. I think I've done the arm and head thing, it's towel time. <laughs> and when did, when did you start doing this? In the last, uh, two years. Uh, when you reach for the towel, um, are there any other oddities, or do you basically then proceed in what we would refer to as a conventional drying manner? Well, I get the towel and I do, uh, 50 on the top of the head. <laughs> And then, and then this is quite a new development, actually. Probably within the last... The whole thing is quite a new development. <laughs> no, no, but this... We clearly had some sort of breakdown a couple of years ago. <laughs> so, right. so now it's 50 on top and 50 behind, whereas it used to just be 50 on top. What was it about your drying policy before this Good point, question. two or three years ago, that you considered inadequate? I was getting through a lot of towels. <laughs> How much moisture do you hold? <laughs> I, I am unbelievably absorbent. You, one, one could wring me out like a sponge. Really... Have you tried that? Because that might be a more efficient way of... I don't see what it is about this system that is hard to believe or understand. I don't like it. No, no. <laughs> well, no don't do it. <laughs> if, if this turns out to be true, it's going to be a, a tense evening. <laughs> Have you ever washed your car by hand rather than going through the drive-thru or something? Uh, yeah. No, never. No, really? Never. Never. I've You're never... the most middle-class man I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> You've never washed your own car? I've, I've been through the, uh, the, you know, the rolly one. That's not <laughs> the same, Al. <laughs> Getting the coin and putting it in the slot does not constitute manual labour. I've, <laughs> I've only had a car for three years. Maybe did that's this, why this started. Your, the, yes, it did the purchase that's of the car coincide with a new shower policy. <laughs> Uh, Having seen the car go through the roly thing that, for some reason, you don't know the name of, even though the name pretty much creates itself. <laughs> That's right. You sort of think, I want to that, create isn't? my own domestic version of this with my hands. <laughs> I, I don't... Yeah. Do you have a little sign when you go into the bathroom that says, Stop. <laughs> Once you get... Do you, do you edge forward, waiting? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> And you've got to do it quickly, cos you know things are going to beep, beep, and you're going to get out again. <laughs> so, David, it's time to take a guess. What do you think? Um, it's truly horrible. Um, <laughs> but I want, I want it to be true, and, and, I, and I, I'm an optimist in life, so I'll say it's true. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't go with that. I mean, if it is true, then it's really disturbing and frightening and, and all yeah. those other things that you scare your kids with. My instinct is that it's a lie. OK, so you're saying it's a lie. Lying. Well... Yeah. Miles, were you telling the truth, Miles, or were you telling a lie? Uh, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yes. <laughs> Almost unbelievably, it's true. <laughs> time Miles showers, he must adhere to his strict system for drying himself. Kate, you're next. Every time I have a haircut, I ask to keep the hair, which I then take to London and scatter for the pigeons to make nests with. There we are. All right. Uh, David, what do you think? What is it that makes you think that the pigeons of London are short of... Hair. Stuff. <laughs> to make, yeah, hair. I mean, there's just well, a lot of stu nest making stuff in London. Well, actually, surely. there isn't that much, and there has been this big drive to mm. keep London tidy. And Kate, yeah. do, you, do you believe do you believe that pigeons prefer blondes? Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I think they do like curls. How do you know that? They prefer. Well, you know, I've, I've, when I scatter it. I then just sort of stand back, make sure it's appreciated, and, and you know... It, gets, it immediately gets snapped up. It does. It? They say they go away. They There's do, somebody yeah. else feeding them some bread, and they go, oh, yeah. curly hair. Who, who wants a bit of old Hovis? You know, How much you... of your hair do you get cut for the curl to be included? Um, it's about an inch and a half I have cut. I don't have it cut very often. Where in London do you go to to distribute your clippings? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever met a woman before? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that's the kind of thing you say to random strangers. It's not a thing I've ever said before, <laughs> but you can't say it isn't pertinent to the circumstances. <laughs> Do you secretly hope that, that one day a very clever pigeon would make a tiny little wig? <laughs> If he if he did, yes. what might he sound like, Richard? Because I've been told that you do a very good pit. Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it now. That's a wood pigeon, isn't it? <laughs> and for the aficionados of Birdland amongst you, not to be confused with the ring dove. <laughs> Not to be confused with the parrot. <laughs> hey. Pretty pollen. <laughs> yes, this program is getting more and more like the one show. <laughs> well, actually, I did want to ask Miles a question, if you don't mind, Miles. Um, if, if you were to do what she does, would you wash the cuttings and hand dry them before you. <laughs> If I were to collect Kate Humble's hair <laughs> and then get on a bus, no, I'd just I'd go to a hairdresser and say, Have you cut Kate Humble's hair? <laughs> Have you? With that well, voice. So I'd put it in a bag for me. <laughs> and then I'd catch a bus and I'd go straight to the top deck and tell everyone exactly what I had in my bag. <laughs> Who wants a spring watch? <laughs> Got a hair in my bag. <laughs> it's not for me, it's for the pigeons. Um, what do you think, David? Can I say, I, I think more of Kate Humble than this. I have a higher I, I think a lot of her. I mean, it's. Yeah. Oh, sorry, in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I think she's uh, telling us a lie. I, th I, I think, yeah, I think we all think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Pretty yeah. unanimous. OK, mm -hmm. Kate, mm -hmm. fact or fiction? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a lie. Uh, every time Kate has a haircut, she doesn't take the hair cuttings to London to scatter to the pigeons for them to make nests with. <laughs> our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, John. <laughs> right, uh, Miles, first of all, uh, what, what is John to you? Uh, John and I were paid to fight together in a supermarket dressed as... <laughs> dressed as gladiators. Kate, how do you know John? 
This is John, and uh, when I was in Africa, he and I dressed up in a pantomime giraffe costume in order to get close-up shots of giraffes in the wild. <laughs> uh, Lee, what is your relationship with John? This is John. Despite being total strangers, we were once forced to share a bed when we were double-booked into the same hotel room. <laughs> David, where do you want to start? Um, well, maybe with Kate, because what I'm reluctant to believe mm. is that the best way of lulling giraffes <laughs> into a false sense of security is to try and disguise yourself as a giraffe, because I reckon they'd... I mean, they'd, a giraffe, it takes one to know one. He thought that if we dressed up as a giraffe, then he could put the camera on a kind of periscope thing up the neck of the giraffe yeah. and get that evening shot um, of the giraffes against the sunset. Yeah. Now, you said very astutely yeah. that it takes a giraffe to know a giraffe. Yeah. If we tried to do this in daylight, it would have failed completely because giraffes have extremely good day vision, but their night vision isn't very good, and that's why we decided to try it. Why is it then necessary to disguise as a giraffe at all? Why not just take a stepladder? <laughs> they are not completely blind. They're just not necessarily going to worry too much about whether you're made out of polyester or real fur. Do you um, just show us how, how it, you did how this? It works. How it works. Would you like me to do that with John? Lee would be the perfect Lee. partner okay, for this. Lee, if you come... he, has, he has a look of the come, wild about him. Here. Kate's going to demonstrate yeah. the whole giraffe so, doppelganger with you, Lee. So you are in the front, OK? You need to stand about there. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, could you three stand up and all just be giraffes in the wild with the sun <laughs> behind you? Yes. OK. Do you ever get the feeling she's mocking us? <laughs> Okay, so you've got this big giraffe costume on and it's yeah. got a kind of pole up the back as its spine. Right. You yeah. have got a camera on a pole poking out of the mouth of the giraffe, right, towards right. them, OK? Right. I am behind you. <laughs> Kate, Kate, uh, at what point do you say action? I've got the laptop here. <laughs> Right. So I'm checking the focus and saying to John, OK, you're nicely framed up. <laughs> That's looking lovely. There was a By the sad. way, I'm a meerkat. Excellent. Yeah. You're doing a very good job. I think that's. I think that's Is made that... it a lot Don't clearer. Let's say it. thank you to our giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most of all, a big round of applause for our meerkat. <laughs> Right. Who would you like to question next? Uh, yes, Miles. You had to dress up as a, a gladiator. A gladiator. Yeah. As in a Roman gladiator, or as in from the TV show Gladiators. <laughs> uh, I, I Roman Roman gladiator. So the sort of sword and sandals. Yeah, uh, breastplates. What sort of gladiator were you? We each had a sword and a shield, and we we did battle. And this was in a supermarket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, were you employed, or was this just... We were, we were in... A <laughs> or a distraction <laughs> technique, yeah, exactly. so that someone else could steal biscuits. Some cakes. <laughs> <laughs> we were promoting a range of foods. <laughs> <laughs> fresh <laughs> fresh lion meats, <laughs> you know, the usual. We were, we were promoting uh, <laughs> a, r <laughs> a range of foods, the Viva Italia delicatessen range. I, I don't know if you remember when Safeways rolled that out. Um, <laughs> And we, would, we would have this fight, and then one of us would uh, die, uh, or be beaten, be vanquished, and the other one would say, oh, how, how did you get the strength to beat me? And you'd say, from aisle seven, where... <laughs> <laughs> where, I've been, where I've been feasting on the, uh, the Italia, the Viva Italia uh, Delicatessen. <laughs> what about Lee? Lee, remind us, what is your link to John? I've forgotten. Uh, this is John. Yes. And we were once forced to share a hotel room together. or we'll share a bed in a hotel room. Because we've been double booked. Um, so, where was the hotel, Lee? The hotel was uh, in Scotland. OK. And any, do you want to be more specific than that? OK. It was <laughs> right in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Be more specific? More specific? Yeah. We, I was at Alice Sky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Fine. 
I believe I, I, you. I, I was... I was what, were you, what, were you, what were you doing? I was uh, at a wedding. Yeah, when was this wedding? Nine years ago. <laughs> you came back from the you came back from the wedding. So I came back from the wedding. Got to the hotel. I had a bit too much to drink. Right. I go to reception. I say hello. Uh, I'm I'm. Well, I have to say. And um, <laughs> nine years ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you well, I didn't have to say. <laughs> but so I told them who I was. She she leans round. She gives me the key. I go upstairs. No lift. Right. And she right. doesn't in any way go. By the way, there is a large man already <laughs> in this room. <laughs> Obviously, she wasn't aware of the mix-up, otherwise she would have stopped me, wouldn't she? She didn't... As I walked off, she didn't go... <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> so, so, what happened? You, you, you were given the key by reception and yes. then opened the door and he was in there? Correct. <laughs> the re <laughs> At which point you said... I was a bit drunk, so I just assumed that there'd been a mix-up, wrong key, I was in the wrong room, so I just went, oh, sorry. And he went, blah, 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 blah. and I thought, I can't remember. He said what? He went, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> you don't mock him. Wait till he opens his mouth in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rob says, "Come on, who are you?" He goes, "Osama." I'm a little bit of a Then you go back down <laughs> I go to back reception down. to, to, to I say, "I said you've given me the wrong key." Yeah. Then she said, "Sorry, there's, there's she, been a mix-up." Been a mix-up, uh, and she said, uh, the, "You're uh, going been, to have uh, to go back in there." <laughs> I was in the right room, he was in the wrong room, but he checked in earlier on. So it wasn't her mistake, it was a mistake early on by somebody else. Why didn't you investigate the possibility of sharing with the person in the other room? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I did was I went round all the rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, do you? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at it, soldier. When you realised, when the two of you realised that uh, you were going to have to share a bed together, mm -hmm. Did you have a kind of a negotiation? I have never been to bed with anyone where negotiations have been involved. That's not completely <laughs> true. Um... <laughs> no, what I mean is, did you say, did you say, for example, I like, I like to sleep on this side of the bed? I'm happiest on the right-hand side? Uh, before um, we I... got to that point, we both tried to not sleep in the same bed. I didn't just go, what the hell are you doing? I'm going to sleep on the left and you can sleep on the right, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> right, so we need an answer. What do you think? I really don't know. Whatever we say, if we get it wrong, we'll look like we've believed something ridiculous. <laughs> I don't believe that the best way of photographing giraffes at sunset <laughs> is to disguise yourself as a giraffe. I don't... I just, just peep two actors fighting it's in a supermarket. But, but why? If you're pushing a range of sort of <laughs> Italian delicatessen <laughs> foods, are you going to imply that they give you gladiatorial strength? No, they're straight that's, to kill somebody. That's not, that's not what yeah, that's people are of... looking for in that kind of, in a nice bit of pastrami. Or will, but will it be able to give me the strength to murder? <laughs> <laughs> and also, don't you think that John looks like the kind of bloke you would bump into at a Scottish wedding? <laughs> See, I, I, I know it sounds weird. I kind of believe... Kate's version you? more. Yeah, you think I, Lee? I think Lee, yeah. I think Lee. But what if it's Miles then? <laughs> then that's awful. It's Miles <laughs> then. We're gonna say Lee. You're gonna say Lee. The the wedding, the bed, the night together. Yes! So John, <sighs> would you please reveal your true identity? I'm John, and I was once paid to fight Miles in a supermarket. <laughs> Yeah, John and Miles were paid to fight each other in a supermarket while dressed as gladiators. This is a horrible, stupid game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, yeah. John. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. We will start with... Uh, David. I like pens. <laughs> I know this! It's true! It's true! I like pens. And I, and I like to know where my pens are. For this reason, I have a three-point pen policy. <laughs> What's your three-point pen policy? Uh, well, point one, I find it important to know where my pens are at any time. Mm -hmm. um, for example, that, that's, that covers all three. This doesn't pen. It? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Point two yeah. 
is to um, is to be hyper aware of any pen that I've lent out. <laughs> Point three uh, is to take any opportunity within the bounds of a reasonable interpretation of the law to purloin or otherwise obtain pens. <laughs> Name three people yeah. who have currently got pens of yours that you want back. <laughs> there are no people who have pens of yours. <laughs> a key part of point two is to get a pen back okay. as soon as possible. When people say, oh, can I borrow your pen? <laughs> what I want to say is, absolutely not! <laughs> get your own pen! This is mine! <laughs> However, as part of a scheme I'm working on to try and seem... <laughs> Normal would be an exaggeration, but, you know, at least acceptable in broader society. I try not to say that. I try and seem casual about, oh, yeah, borrow my pen, that's fine. And then I'm thinking about it constantly until it is returned. The pen that you've got with you tonight, is that your own pen or is that a, a BBC pen? This, this is now my pen. Pass me the pen. I'd rather not. Well, you have to. <laughs> I will give it you back. Yeah. I will promise to give you the pen back. You Within five minutes. All right. Minutes. Okay, shall I... T um, Let's meet halfway. It. All right. It'll be the first time we've made physical contact in five years. I'll see you. <laughs> right, put the pen on the floor and step away. <laughs> step right. away from you the pen. You're going to destroy the pen, I'm not going to destroy the pen. You've got such a cynical mind. Back yeah. away from the pen. He's going to destroy it. I'm not going to destroy the he pen. Is. That would be infantile. <laughs> So this is a pen you got from the BBC today. Yeah. If I take this pen and say, I'm keeping this pen, what will you do to get the pen back off me? I will not fight you. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? It didn't seem much of a system, did it? That it's he's going to ask me to have the pen back, I'm going to say no, and he's going to leave it at that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It is fair so to say sorry. we have created <laughs> drama. <laughs> You had explicitly reassured him in front of witnesses mm. that you would not break the pen. That I is didn't true. believe that him. Is true. I mm. didn't believe him. I knew he'd break the pen. That mm. pen, I'm afraid to say, I and I hope this doesn't make me sound heartless, when I put that pen down there, it was dead to me. <laughs> right, Lee, which way are you going? Is he telling the truth or was he telling a lie? I bet you love pens. I bet you're pretty crazy about pens, but you do not have a three-point system. I think he might. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Lee, take a guess. Truth or lie? We'll say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. David Mitchell, the truth or a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. David does have a three-point pen policy, so he knows where they are. <laughs> oh, that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have won by three points to two. <laughs> but it's uh, not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Miles Jupp. <laughs> yes. Miles Jupp. He has the face of a choir boy and the morals of a choir master. <laughs> Good night. Joe Brand of the Boys next on BBC One. Have I got news for you? Brand new drama from BBC Three back from their halls with the return of lip service. While BBC Four's Reggae Night kicks off right now with Reggae Britannia, followed by some classic sessions at the BBC.